He's the son of a champion jockey and is the latest recruit to Hong Kong racing and is trying to follow in the footsteps of likes of Douglas White, Fearless Cooksey, Robbie Fradd and Basil Marcus who've all tasted the biggest success here in Hong Kong racing. This is what we've got coming up on HK Direct and we're joined by Aldo de Mayer, top South African jockey who's the latest jockey to come to Hong Kong. We'll be talking about his career and he's experienced so far here in Hong Kong. Aldo, it's great to have you in the studio. Welcome to Hong Kong and to the show today. Thank you. My pleasure. Your career as a jockey wasn't necessarily a straightforward one. I want to go back to 2003. You were rejected by the Jockeys Academy there. What happened? Uh, yeah, I spent a couple of months in the Jockeys Academy and um yeah, things didn't go as, as I planned. I was always keen on, on learning and, and, and doing a couple of things, but uh, I think the riding master just felt that uh, I perhaps didn't have what it take that took at the time to make, make it as a career in racing. And uh, yeah, I suppose it was just a little bump along the way, but uh, yeah, it just made us a bit stronger and just gave us something to fight for. Did it dent your enthusiasm, your desire to become a jockey? No, definitely not. I think it perhaps just got the fire burning a little bit more. If, if there's something someone tells you you can't have, I think it's in human nature for us just to, to fight to get it a bit more, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm really kind of glad it happened because uh, it gave me an opportunity to learn how to fight. And, uh, yeah, it's taken us places. You joined the Jockeys Academy then in 2007. 2010, your champion apprentice in South Africa. You mentioned you had the fight. What did you have to do, though, in those seven years to really turn things around? Yeah, this was four long years. Um, I suppose when you're a young kid, it doesn't really matter at that stage, but uh, uh, it, it gave me opportunity to gain a bit of experience, or quite a bit of experience, uh, versus other guys that, that just gets to the academy and signs their papers a year later. Um, I built a lot of good relationships with a lot of good people, uh, a lot of good stables, a lot of good trainers, Mr. Best and, and, and his daughter Candice Best, uh, to name a couple. And uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it gave me perhaps a, 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 perhaps a head start uh, on the other guys when I did get the opportunity to to show what I was capable of and uh, yeah, it gave me a good start to my career. I, I started with a very powerful stable at the stage uh, away from Cape Town who was Charles Laird and he was a really successful trainer and he's given he basically gave me my first job and uh, yeah, that was just my platform to take off and uh, yeah, I haven't looked back since. I mentioned at the top of the show your father's Andrew Fortune, champion yeah. jockey in South Africa. For you, was there extra pressure on you following in his footsteps? Uh, yeah, I think early on, you know, obviously his big footsteps to fill. He was a real, real, nat and still is, he's a real natural horseman. And uh, um, if ever, anyone ever watched him ride, you know, he made horses do things that not too many people could do. And um, yeah, I think initially it, I, I had to just work my way out of his shadow. And eventually I just let go of that tag and, and just try to build my own legacy and um, do things my way. And once, once that happened, I think the ball started rolling a bit more frequently and a bit more freely. And uh, yeah, he was always there to maintain, guide me along the way. And he was quick to jump on any sort of mistakes. Doesn't matter how many winners I rode on the day, he'd focus on where I could improve. And it's something I didn't enjoy at the time, but it was something that I needed. And uh, yeah, he kept on grinding away. And slowly, slowly, the, the, the criticism just stopped. And I think bit by bit, I could feel that I was getting the hang of the wheel myself. And uh, yeah, I think he could identify that too. And, I think up until the last couple of seasons, uh, things have gone really smoothly and uh, yeah, I think now he's back in my corner. So you've got your father in your corner. Mentioned before as well that South Africa's produced some amazing jockeys over the years. Here in Hong Kong we've seen what Douglas White has done, Felix Kutzi, Robbie Frad, mm -hmm. Basil Marcus, further back, Barty Leisha. Who were the jockeys, apart from your father, that you sort of modelled yourself on or looked up to when you were coming through the ranks? Just, you know, someone like Mr Marcus, you always got to admire, you know, you used to make things happen. If a door didn't open, he'd find a way, you know, and uh, that's always a sort of characteristic that you, you got to keep in mind and, 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 and mold yourself on. And someone like Dougie White too, he just constantly wanted to improve and his improvement was constant. And over the years, he just got better and better uh, by, by what I saw. You know, I was obviously young watching him uh, uh, progress in his career, but it was always something that, that you'd admire. So gentlemen like those, always uh, something that you, you, you could keep in mind and, and mould yourself on, like I say. Let's have a look at some of the career highlights so far, because you are only young. I'm sure there's plenty more to go on the highlight reel, so to speak. But Cape Town is home for you. The biggest race there is the J&B Met. You won it in 2013 on this horse here, Marshall Eagle. Wide draw, 
80 to 1 chance. What was this day like for you? Now, this is amazing. Um, as you can see, it's really going really smoothly. This is the biggest race, well, one of the biggest races in Africa. And coming past the 400, this, this race is baby basically laden with, with quite a number of champions in there. And this was his first time over the trip. And there was a lot of stamina doubts there, but everything building up to it was, was basically a really smooth prep. The horse had one year variety club. He finished a length and a half behind him. So he had all the credentials to do it. I think 80 to 1 is perhaps just uh, due to the testament of the quality of the field. Uh, the, the runner up ended up winning the Met next year. Jackson's a sire now. There's a multiple champion filly there. So this was an exceptional win from this. Was, I think the initial intention was for him to drop out because of his draw. And, some reason or another, I just decided to bounce him and uh, I basically rode a Hong Kong race here and he got in a nice position and everything just panned out and I, I think it was written in the stars that we won that race and yeah, it was an unforgettable moment. Looking at you talking to you now, I can see how much that meant to you. Where does that stack up in your career? Um, well, well, I must say that it was a career turning moment for me because everything basically just I constantly say take off because there's been a lot of moments in my career that I think was key factors to turning, to just stepping up, you know. Like I said, I never like to put a limit on where I think we could go because um, you always want to better yourself, you always want to improve and this was one of those moments that just took my career to another level and from there I started breaking into the top seven nationally and then to top five and like last year to the top three and then winning championships and these were one of those moments. and. Yeah, that's funny thing is I, I couldn't remember for the next couple of days what happened, but uh, it was just a really special moment and you can't put words to it. And that's one of the key moments in my life. As you say as well there too, top three last season in South Africa, which led to a berth in the PGI Jockeys Challenge in Singapore. Taking on some top jockeys there like Hugh Bowman, Jay Marrera, Kieran McAvoy. You won the Jockey Challenge that night though there at Crunchy. Just tell us a bit about that night. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we walked in and... You always see these names on a, on, on a really big stage and they all had a nice, cool demeanour about him. Uh, I remember Joe coming in and he was perhaps the, the real key, key thing for, for, of the challenge and uh, one by one we were getting introduced and Joe walked out and the crowd just went crazy. So, uh, yeah, it was a lovely stage to, to be able to display your, your talents, if you want to call it that. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have the greatest rides on the night, but, uh, yeah, everything seemed to work out quite well and uh, we ended up, uh, pulling off the Victor Lodorum, ended up winning the challenge, which was quite, quite nice and I think perhaps a catapult to, to uh, getting a stint, yeah. When did it dawn on you? When did it become on your radar that you wanted to come and ride here in Hong Kong? Ah, uh, you always have your eye on Hong Kong, you know. Um, like I say, it's just up to you as a rider to decide when you feel you're ready to com com compete here and when you've really mastered your skill. Um, Hong Kong's always something that you want, you want to want to do. Uh, it's always in the corner of your of your eye and uh, yeah I just felt at the time was right I think I started getting the hang of things very more, well more frequently back home and uh, yeah I've left a lot of top horses back home but uh, I just felt the time was right. Hasn't taken you long to make an impact here either your first night three rides two winners that was a dream start. No definitely um, I think we still had our work cut out but uh, yeah those opportunities and they, they come around and you've got to make the most of it and uh, yeah, I was determined to make the most of it. I, I just told myself that this is just another evening to the rest of the guys, just another meeting, and I just got to make the most of it and make it an important meeting for me. And I was quite determined, and things worked out quite nicely. It, I, I read about the notor notorious uh, history of, of, of Happy Valley, and uh, I didn't want to take too much in mind to it and, and just ride the horses as they were and ride the course for what it was. And I'd see, funny enough, it actually turned out quite nicely because the horses managed the course quite well. and. Credit to Mr. Mullard for the opportunities he gave me and uh, yeah, it's always nice to come out on top in the evening like that. Grant Van der Kirk is someone who came through the jockey's ranks with you back in South Africa. He started here at the start of the season. He's the godfather to one of your sons. Yeah. What sort of advice or opinion or feedback or any of those sort of things did he give you about coming to Hong Kong and riding here? He was actually the one telling me, listen, I really think that your riding style will suit Hong Kong and I really think you should make your way here. And I thought he was just saying that just for a bit of encouragement and um, yeah, uh, eventually more people started uh, saying the same thing and I thought maybe I should just sit up and, and think that perhaps now is the right time and I wasn't exactly sure if, if I would get accepted 
But yeah, the opportunity came knocking and yeah, I, I welcomed it quite, quite freely. Grant's, Grant's quite a good, naturally talented boy and uh, yeah, we've, we've come through from the academy days and uh, we've been best friends for a very long time and it's nice to be competing on a stage like this now. Before the show, last night, you rode a winner, Ever Brave at Happy Valley, taking you to three. You contracted until the end of this season. Do you get a good feel for th how things are going here? Would you like to call Hong Kong home for longer than just this stint? Yeah, definitely. I think there's more to come. Um, obviously, the more time you spend here, the more you, 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 get, you improve and get the nicks of things. I think I've adapted quite quickly, which is, which is something I'm really pleased about because um, if you don't get the hang of it, it's going to become quite tricky. And uh, after the second meeting, I was a little concerned that obviously I need to interpret things a little bit differently. And uh, I really just started doing some real fine tuning, just picked a couple of brains and things that started making sense to me, I started applying. and. Uh, yeah, it made things a lot more comfortable last night and I think I was getting a lot closer. Uh, the winner second and uh, other horses getting in positions that I needed to be in on what we know is quite a tricky track. And um, yeah, I need to now start taking that over to Charlton. I was close to having a winner or two there as well. So I thought you won watching that race, Refined Treasure. Yeah, yeah, listen, uh, he ran at 55.2. I couldn't ask him to go any quicker. So. Uh, it was quite exciting. It would have been nice if we got up, but I was very pleased with the result nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I think it's something big to come from that, that specific individual. And uh, yeah, I, I think I'm finding myself in a decent position at the moment. I just got to make the most of it. Do you like Hong Kong as a city to live? No, definitely. I really love how efficient everything is, is efficiently everything is done. Uh, I, I appreciate and I enjoy the way they take care of their staff and their, 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 their sportsmen. You know, it's something I think the rest of the world can pay attention to because I think getting that sort of treatment, you really give everything you've got. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really pleasing. That's racing. Away from racing, though, your father's been here visiting. You've got two sons. Just tell us what's life like for you, Aldo, away from the racetrack and horse racing. Yeah, I love spending time with my boys. They, they're really the joy of my life. And uh, this is really something new to me, to being away from them. I'm a proper family man. and uh, But this is a sacrifice you've got to make to to take the next step in your career. And uh, this is an opportunity that only comes around once in a lifetime. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make the most of it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure they're really proud of how things have gone. And uh, yeah, the best they'll be up here soon with me too. I'm sure they will be proud of you. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us, Aldo. All the best for this stint and for whatever lies beyond that. Thank you very much. No, I really appreciate time and it's a real honor being here. Thanks to Eldo de Mayer for joining us here on this edition of HK Direct. We're racing on Saturday at Sha Tin. We've got a 10 race card to look forward to where the Hong Kong Jockey Club Community Trophy is the feature event race for the highest class race is the last, a class two over the mile featuring the undefeated Champions Way, who's five from five. For more information, go to the website and also to at HKJC underscore racing through social media. That's it for this edition of the show. Thanks for your company. Next week, next Friday, we'll be looking at the final Group 1 for the season, the Standard Chartered Champions and Chater Cup. We look forward to seeing you then.